And we're back for episode five of the Chrysler 300 project. At the end of the last episode, you saw me drop the engine back into the car. Now, as you may be able to tell, everything is completely reassembled now, the hood is back on. I didn't film that because I didn't find that necessary. If you took the engine apart, you know how it all goes back together. It's just nuts and bolts. There's nothing really technical there. What I would like to focus on for this episode is sort of a checklist to go over when you're about to fire up an engine that you've been this deep into, some things you might wanna go over and make sure are good before you try to fire it up. And then we're gonna go through the first fire on this vehicle and make sure we're good. So one of the first things you wanna think about when you just get an engine back together again is, okay, what kind of fluids do I need to fill up before I start this thing? What have I gone through? Now, I like to take the cap off of each of the items that I've had a finger in, that way I know that I need to add some fluid there. I actually did a transmission service on this vehicle as well. So I have the transmission fill tube cap off. Well, the engine's completely dry, so I have the engine oil cap off. The coolant is completely dry, so I have the coolant cap off. And also I replaced the power steering pump on this car, so the power steering cap is off. Only once I have filled those things back up do I put the cap back on, and then I know for a fact that all my fluids are covered. So just do a mental checklist in your mind. What things have I touched? What things am I going to need fluids in first? If you wanna write it down, that's fine. You can check it off and then move on to the next step. Literally go hand tight on that oil filter. You do not need a crank on it. It's not gonna fall off on its own. So again, I performed a transmission service on this vehicle. With this style transmission, it's called a nag transmission. The service calls for between four and four and a half quarts to refill it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put four in here right now. And then after the engine is running, we'll check it and top it off. All right, next up is the engine oil. Now a Hemi engine, your standard 5.7 liter Hemi, doing an oil change that calls for seven quarts of 520 oil. Now in this case, because I've had the engine completely dry, it's probably going to take a little bit more than that in the end, but I'm still going to start with seven quarts. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and top off our power steering because again, I changed the power steering pump. Now, you won't have to refill the whole entire system, but you'll just have to fill it up enough to make it work. Now, after the engine is running again, you will definitely need to add some more fluid because there will be some air in the system, but this would be a good way to get us started. The last fluid that we're going to have to fill up here is our coolant. Now, I have this vacuum-assisted coolant refilling tool. And this tool is great. Um, honestly, they're not very expensive to find them online because everyone's making them now because they are so useful. But if you can pick up one of these, I highly encourage it. They make things so much easier for refilling the cooling system. However, if you don't, you can always do it the old fashioned way. Go ahead and fill it up, run it through a heat cycle, let it burp a little bit, bring some of the, bring some of the coolant from the recovery bottle back into the system, but it can take multiple times doing that. Now on the Hemi, they do have a nice feature. I'm gonna to cut to a shot here now where there's a plug on the front of the water pump assembly. And if you undo that plug and then start filling the cooling system through the bottle until it runs out of that plug and then put the plug in there, then top off the coolant bottle, that actually works pretty well. It's not bad, but if you do not take out that plug, you're going to be fighting air bubbles for a while. So try to avoid that. The vacuum assist, saves you all of that trouble. You can do it all in one shot, but also too, once this thing is at full vacuum and you close the valve, it should hold vacuum. If it does not hold vacuum, if it's leaking off, then you know you have a leak somewhere in your cooling system and allow you to find it before you go filling it up with coolant. So I just wanna clarify here, now that the vacuum is being held on there, and you can see 
It's not moving, it's not bleeding off. Now, you don't have to sit here for 20 minutes and watch it. If it's not moving within the first minute or so, you're good, your cooling system is ready to go. So in this case, I'm ready to go, the cooling system is holding properly, I'm ready to refill it. All right, now we just do a quick top off to get it to our max cold fill line. Then all our fluids are set. Now, of course, you're still going to want to check all of these levels after the engine is up and running. You've gone through a full heat cycle on it just to top them off, make sure that all of them are correct before you let the vehicle go. All right, so the next step that I like to do is use your scan tool, whatever it is. I'm using my professional scan tool. Obviously, you don't need one this complex. You can just use more of your generic OBD2 scan tool. Um, all we're doing is looking for basic codes that will be set like if we forgot to plug something in. That's all I'm doing here. I just want to check and see if there's an active code for something that I forgot to plug in that I can plug in before everything gets really hot and hard to get to. All right, so I do have a pending code here, P0520 for engine oil pressure sensor circuit. Now I know for a fact that I did in fact plug that in, so this could be residual from working on this thing before, so I'm going to go ahead and clear that code. Let's go back to read codes. Okay, so there's no fault codes detected now. So I know that pretty much everything else is plugged in because I don't have any kind of active codes um, because most of those will set without it being plugged in. So I think at this point, we're ready to start cranking the engine over. Now, what we're trying to do here is we've had the engine completely out of oil, correct? So now we've got new oil in there, but it's gonna take a little bit to prime the system. So currently, I have the fuel pump fuse out, so there is no fuel pressure going to the rails. There's no fuel in the rails. And I'm just gonna use the starter to crank the engine over for probably a good few cycles to make sure I have oil pressure. I'm actually going to read it using the scan tool, but I'm going to make sure I have good oil pressure and that I feel like the rockers and lifters have achieved enough oil lubrication to actually start the engine. All right, so I've cranked the engine over enough times to ensure that I have proper oil pressure. I went ahead and reinstalled the fuel pump fuse. Now is the moment of truth. Now is when we actually try to fire up the engine. And I'll be honest, you know, I'm confident in my abilities. I've been doing this for a long time. But regardless, when you've been that deep into an engine, there is always going to be a little bit of trepidation involved on that first fire up. So we'll fire this thing up, see how it sounds. It's probably gonna rattle a fair bit because again, the lifters, they're gonna take a while to pump up but hopefully there's no other major issues and I'll probably go ahead and pop out and make sure there's no fluid leaks or anything like that. But let's give her a try, see what happens. Cycle the key here, get a little bit more fuel pressure a couple of times. All right. Now you may be able to hear a bit of that lifter clatter happening right now. But overall, it seems to be running decent. All right, let's pop on out and check and see if we have any sort of fluid leaks happening. All right, we've got some uh, smoke burning off of the headers right now, just some excess fluid on there. Nothing really to be concerned about. I don't see anything else 
alarming at the moment. Again, we have some pretty heavy lifter tick, but I believe that will go away. All right. So you heard that pretty bad lifter tick as I was headed out the door. Sounds bad, but look, take it for a little drive, get some heat in it, get some miles on it. Now this thing is purring away just like a Hemi should. No issues. All right, you guys, so that's the end of this episode. You see this engine's running properly now. Now it's time to move on to the fun stuff, but that's gonna be in the next episode. We'll see you next time on Reignited.